Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello, and welcome to Blasphemous. Now, this game was the runner up the last time I did a poll asking what game I should play. Hollow Knight absolutely destroyed the competition, but Blasphemous was in second place, and I did want to get to this game eventually, and eventually is apparently now. So, Blasphemous, now by the way, there is no background music right here, so if you don't hear anything, don't worry, the music will start once I get past this screen. Uh, Blasphemous, it's a Metroidvania game that came out in September of 2019, developed by a studio called The Game Kitchen, published by Team 17. They have put out many, many games. Now, this game, just in case you're curious about playing yourself, I have a few things to say. Number one, normally, the price for this is about $25 US. It does go on sale quite frequently. In fact, right now at the time that this video is released, it is on sale on numerous platforms, including Steam. Usually it goes on sale for only about five or six dollars US. Uh, pretty, pretty good deal if you ask me, given the fact that according to howlongtobeat.com, the main story takes about 13 and a half hours. But if you're a completionist and you're going for 100%, it can take upwards of about 27 hours. So that's a pretty good value for the cost. Uh, by the way, I always check prices using istthereanydeal.com and I check game length using howtobeat.com um, just as a way to understand what I'm getting myself into. Uh, I'm not sponsored by any of those sites, but if you wanna check them out, I'll try to remember to put links below. Now, one more thing though about Blasphemous. This is despite the graphical nature the actual graphics of the game itself probably the most mature game that has been featured on this channel so if you are a parent and you normally watch these videos with your kids i encourage you to look into this before allowing them to watch this uh, despite the more kind of cartoony nature of the game's look there are some things in here that could be quite disturbing and um, viewer discretion as i say is definitely advise and that goes for all of you watching who maybe aren't children in case you are kind of sensitive to a little bit more gore than what the souls like games tend to produce um understand there's some rather vivid imagery throughout this game so uh real quick before we get into our pilgrimage uh, one more thing I want to take note of is that I have played this for about 20 minutes. I tested it out to make sure everything was working. And one thing that I already have a small issue with is the text. In game, the text can become very difficult to read, at least for me. The gothic style that they're using along with the pixelation makes some of it a little bit hard to uh, understand. It's, it's a little bit difficult to read through some of the text so i'm gonna do my best i may struggle not to mention a lot of this is i believe latin this time i'm fairly certain it is latin so just keep that in mind i'll do my best to read through all the text i actually looked for mods to see if anyone has put out anything to make it clearer sadly no doesn't seem to be the case now Let's take a quick look at the options here. So in game, you have some audio and text language. You have show how to play. In other words, your early game tutorial. I'm going to leave that on. And then you can go through and play around with the controls. I am playing with a DualSense controller here. Uh, so unfortunately, the button prompts don't match up, but uh, we can kind of figure it out as we go. Accessibility, you have controller vibration. I have on. Screen shake, I have on. I may turn that off if it gets too bad. And then the Achievement Unlock pop-up, I have that disabled because I don't want that coming up in the video, but I will see it down in the bottom corner of my Steam display, so I may just kind of tell you whenever I get one. As far as video goes, very, very simple uh, video options. You have V-Sync, you have rendering effects. This is actually kind of cool. So this is with everything disabled, but then there's different CRT. Uh, cathode ray tube, by the way, if you're not familiar with that terminology, you have different options. So CRT one, which I actually kind of like, but then as you go into the other ones, it gets a little silly. CRT two, CRT three, and CRT four, which is just yikes. But I think I'll leave it disabled for now. And then resolution, I am playing this in 4K, and I was hoping that that would actually help with the text. It did not. And then you have sound, really just some basic sliders here. Hopefully this mix is pretty good. I think it should be but um, we'll play around with it. This is intended to be a full series. I don't know that I'm going to be doing 100%. It, uh, it'll just be uh, up to all of you. See how you are enjoying the series and see how much I'm enjoying the game. But let's get into our pilgrimage. We have three slots right here. I deleted the one that I started yesterday so we can start brand new and fresh. So let's get into Blasphemous. It is not the sun rising but our sins.
Because it is my guilt, I claim you grievous miracle. Make my chest hurt with regret. Forge your punishment and nail it deep. Shape my guilt once again. And thus, guilt, repentance, mourning, and every pain of the soul of all kind were visibly and tangibly manifested everywhere and in all of us. Sometimes in the form of blessing and grace, sometime in the form of punishment and corruption. That divine will, equally pious and cruel, which we could not and will never be able to unravel, was called the Miracle. Brotherhood of the Silent Sorrow. So you can see we're already very heavily damaged according to our health bar up in the top left there. Uh, in case you haven't figured it out yet, this game is going to have very strong religious and I would say organized religion undertone. Not even undertones. It's overtly involved in religion and various religious aspects, especially in terms of guilt and and penance and repentance and we're going to see that theme running uh, very very strongly throughout this game so hopefully that can spur some really good conversation down in the comments below and maybe i'll share some of my own backstory as we go through the game but right away we are just found on this corpse or, or this pile of corpses us being one of them uh, but tell me to hit the left bumper And in doing so, I have just used the first of my biliary flasks. Now, I had to look this up to make sure that this was correct. And biliary is a word relating to bile or the biliary ducts, which is actually, um, well, bile is a very basic solution that is produced by your livers. And it is used for various purposes, but one of them being digest uh, digestion. So the fact that we're using a biliary flask to heal is a little little odd these consecrated flasks are refilled by kneeling at a and and i'm gonna try and pronounce this correctly i did look it up already uh pray do okay so this is actually just going to be kind of like an altar where you sit or you kneel at in order to pray or um, i believe it's requesting absolution find empty vessels to increase the amount you can carry so similar to many of these types of games i have a refillable health flask right now i only have two of them Okay, it didn't even heal me too full. So some basic combat and some basic movement right now. Left and right, of course, I can jump. My swing is just with the X or the square button. Uh, nothing is assigned yet to the triangle or the Y. Um, my X or my A is going to be jump. Uh, pretty much not many other things I can do. I can slide, which is kind of your, your dodge ability. You can't just spam it too much. So this is me actually mashing the button. Can't do too much there. Over to the left, there's nothing. I can't do any sort of wall jumps or anything. Um, oh, I just used my other biliary flask, just testing out the controls. Uh, the left trigger doesn't seem to do anything. The right trigger, by the way, is how I am sliding. So let's just push on forward, get through this really desolate zone. The rooms all seem to be very small and very quick, so it's telling me A is to jump, of course. And then we can just jump over here. I do like this. 
there is uh, some really strong what I call magnet hands. So you only need to get reasonably close to a ledge in order to grab it. So you can see there, I mean, normally in many other games without that, oh geez, without that ledge grab mechanic, I would certainly uh, fall and not be able to make it. But I appreciate that the ledge grab is there and is rather strong. So we can jump down by holding down and jumping and right trigger to slide through there. Perfect. So I can't get up there just yet. Uh, one thing that I did notice though is that there is a map. Thank goodness there is a map. And in this map, we can put markers. So one thing that I want to do similar to Hollow Knight is put down markers of places I want to revisit. So I think for now, I'm just going to put that and that marker, maybe I'll remember to make notes at the end of this, will be I need either some sort of double jump or I need a uh, wall jump perhaps in order to reach that ladder. Okay, so this is going to tell me that I can attack and I can indeed, I can attack these little candelabra type deals and here's my first pre-do press y to rest at the pre-do saving your game and refilling your health and flask upon death you will respond at the last visited pre-do resting will cause enemies to respond very very familiar mechanic we're all up to speed on that so there we go this right here cool looking statue not really sure what's going on there but uh can't do anything with it no interactions as of right now And, again, in typical Metroidvania or Souls-like fashion, uh, we get a very, very early boss. The Warden of the Silent Sorrow. So you gotta be careful. If you're too close when he does that, you're gonna get kicked. Because there is a jump, though, it's really nice. You can actually... You can actually jump over some of those attacks. So if I just back up... Back up. Jump over. Good three hits. So I'm actually not even using the dodge mechanic right here. Just real basic combat right now. Back up, jump over. Oh, got a little too close, that's all right. Almost got him. And jump. And there we go, the warden down. So pretty basic combat for now. Requiem Eternum. So there's that symbol again. You'll have to tell me down below if that symbol is actually something um, seen in any sort of religious text. There is going to be a lot of me not understanding <laughs> necessarily the nature of what's going on. So I've just slain the Warden. I then took my helm off and I collected some of the blood from this slash on his side and then put it back on my head, which is um odd. Yeah, to say the least. Can break all these lanterns. I don't think they really do anything. Now this is telling me that I can slash up. So if I just jump up and try and slash, that way I can hit this mechanism right here. By the way, it won't be very long before I'm in new uh, Uncharted territory. You need key to the chamber of the eldest brother to open this door. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind. In fact, why don't we go ahead and put a map marker here. There we go. Reminder to return here eventually. The Holy Line, we have our first NPC. Regretful be the heart, penitent one. The anguish of the eldest brother has now come to an end. I am Deo Gracias, witness to and narrator of the acts of the grievous miracle. Such is my penance, as yours is silence. The cradle of affliction is what you seek. This can be found in the mother of mothers of the churches. It is a remote place separated from the rest of these lands by a great sacred and forbidden door. Even a wise penitent like me 
knows nothing of what lies beyond those high walls. However, what I do know is that, according to the rule, one must carry out the three humiliations to gain access to what they guard. One of them must be performed in the high mountains, covered in thick blankets of snow and ice. Another in the depths of a dark, entombed church where the sleeper lies. And the last one, at the end of the trail, carved by moans that claw their way out of an iron spiral, in the bowels of the bell named Hondo that grows into the earth. Take this thorn and place it on the handle of your sword. If, when the time comes, as you grip your weapon firmly, you notice that it wounds you and makes you bleed. Having grown, with more thorns sprouting from it, writhing over the figure of the father carved into the knob, that will mean that you are at the mercy of the grievous miracle, whether for its punishment or its forgiveness. I think the voice acting so far is absolutely incredible. So we just got a thorn, and we can check out the items that we found so far. Well, not using I, but using this button on my controller, which we'll do right now. So we have thorn, a small gift from Diocrasius, nailed into the effigy of the twisted under the guard of your sword. The thorns arisen from the miracle feed on sin and guilt, growing with the burden that it's bearer carry so this is a quest item and there's also more information if we go to the lore deus gracias's farewell brother abbot you know that i've been a scribe in this abbey since i was but a wee child i have written about our church our saint and our miracle of the greatest pain i must inform you that i have made the decision to leave although i intend to continue writing in these walls i cannot be a true witness of the works of the miracle i need to appreciate with my own eyes your holy works I will be a teller of the miracle wherever it takes me, rain or shine, or scorching sand under my bare feet. So let's take a look and see what else we have. So over all the way to the left, we have a selection for rosary beads. We have relics, quest items, which we've just seen. Mea culpa hearts. Mea culpa hearts, okay? So mea culpa, by the way, you actually often hear this in legal terms. Mea culpa is uh, taking responsibility. It's, honestly, the easy way to think of mea culpa is, hey, my bad. I made a mistake. I am, I am admitting fault here. Then we have prayers. We have abilities, which apparently take a mea culpa. Go to the mea culpa altar to unlock new abilities. So we have several different sections here. I'm assuming that is based on the number of mea culpa hearts that I have. And then we have a spot for collectibles. Also, I have 300... I'm not sure what the XP currency is called just yet, so hopefully we'll learn more about Even that. Even a wise penitent like me, no. however, what song Okay, we've already heard this, I'm going to skip through it. Thank you, Dia Gracias, and here is another preview. Might as well get our health back. So the bar that is under our health, that is not stamina, that is something else we're going to learn about here uh, rather soon, actually. So we have our first enemy, well, other than the boss, our first enemies. Very basic. Can't kill the ravens. Bit unfortunate there. And here, I can actually parry. So, if I do the right bumper, this right here is considered a parry. And the game's going to teach me about that here soon. Right here, advanced technique, parry, counterattack, retribution. Press the right bumper to parry. This maneuver allows you to counter weak attacks and deflect heavy attacks. Uh, heavy strikes during a counter so it has to be a weak attack in order to counter press the attack button the x button at the moment of impact to perform a retribution increasing the force of the blow and stunning some enemies so let's do that right here there we go and missed it it's actually a lot earlier than you think at least with these enemies it's uh, pretty much right when they just start to swing okay oh Oh man, I missed it. I don't even know what that was. It said I could uh, hit triangle or Y, I guess, for uh, for some sort of hidden move. Uh, I do like this. You can crouch and attack. 
which is nice because with these little dagger wielding enemies I can just go ahead and get that kill without worrying about taking any needless damage all right we got these sludge things we can deal with okay I'm increasing that inventory up there and our first item is Verdiales of the Forsaken Hand. So this is a prayer. Open the inventory to equip it. Let's do that. So Ver Verdiales, if I'm saying that right, of the Forsaken Hamlet, excuse me, song that filled the air during the festivities of a lost village. Its power finds its way through the floor, continues through walls and ceilings, harming the enemies of the Penitent One. That is us. That is the player character, the Penitent One. The ringing of a laced shell horn used to precede this chant but now only silence remains. Whether it rain, sun, or wind, may this land blessed be. Whether walking or in deep sleep, may this land blessed be. Whether by day or in obscurity, may this land blessed be. So we've now equipped that. And now we're learning about prayer and fervor. That is that other bar. Equip a prayer in your inventory and then press left trigger to invoke it. Prayers and some combat techniques use up fervor. Attack and execute, so that's probably what that triangle or the Y button uh, indicated, to fill up your fervor bar. Okay, so here is my prayer. For the alleys of the... There we go. Get that of the uh, Forsaken Hamlet. Make sure we're killing these sludge creatures as they pop up. Okay, definitely am not going to be able to get that item, so might as well drop. Let's do... Uh, do a little treasure right there. And again. It's interesting that most of them are dying with two of those counterattacks, but that one got stunned for me to do an execution. Alright, let's see. If we can get we can get him a little closer. I guess I can just kill him just like this. It kind of feels unfair, but. I'm not going to complain. Plus, I'm getting my fervor up, which is good. Oh, don't get attacked for no reason. Get up there. Oh, can't walk into him. That makes sense. And I can get up here, but I, I went up here when I was doing my testing. And other than killing that uh, skeleton, I couldn't figure out a reason to go up there. Again, can't do anything with the uh, ravens. Oop. Okay, we have that guy up there, that little bird carrying something. Advanced technique, air impulse. This this one is definitely a little tricky to pull off, for me at least. Press right trigger and attack in the air to descend, to ascend after hitting an enemy. You can do this up to two times before landing. So, and it's jump and attack using both right trigger and the uh, the actual attack button. So let's try that. So there it is. And we also just got what appears to be maybe a little cherub. Okay, it's a children, a child of moonlight. You'll find them caged all over. Also, I don't know, custodia? I believe it's just supposed to be custodia. Correct me down below, or it's, maybe it's sistodia, but I think it's custodia. You can release them with any technique at your disposal. Now, if I go into my inventory, is that something I can see? not a relic it's not a quest is it a collectible it's not even a collectible so I'm not sure what those are for I suppose maybe we'll learn later on okay so let's try that advanced technique again oh okay that kind of worked oh, come on give me the execution I was gonna say let's do a little prayer why not Good, excellent. We have our heal available if we need it. There is no answer to our plea. The miracle has forsaken us, and my ornate throne turns its back on those who await here. Okay, so M does open up the map. It's also bound to my mute keys, <laughs> so I was just trying to unmute myself. But this is actually as far as I got in my testing yesterday. So everything going beyond this is going to be completely brand new and blind for me. 
Okay, so it's just teaching me how to open up my map. I do have another pre due. Okay, it doesn't fill up your fervor. Um, this really seems like I should be able to interact with it, but there's nothing I can do right now. Unless, do you think, let's try praying. Maybe praying in front? No, that does nothing. Okay. That is okay. And all right, so we have some new characters to interact with in this building. Let's uh, let's start talking. Sorrowful will be the heart, penitent one. Welcome to Albero, sanctuary to this humble brotherhood of the kissers of wounds. Few remain here who can still employ it, but Tirso is my name. There are few of us who still care for the sick and ailing. With devout kisses, we bless the wounds of those who seek our protection. The time outside these walls passes by strangely. In sundowns, we need not contemplate. But if your penance happens to carry you under set skies, be so kind as to bring us some ingredients for our ointments. The will in the miracle shall show you which ones they are. Okay, so Tirso, bit of a, uh, a medicine man here, looking to heal the sick and ailing, which I think is a great cause, so need to be on the lookout for ingredients. I apologize for skipping one of those lines of dialogue. It doesn't advance automatically. You have, oh gross. You actually have to advance it by hitting the interact button on your either controller or keyboard, and I did it a little bit prematurely. My apologies for that. So we have a door over here, but I can also go down. See if there's anyone else I can talk to or help out maybe. No, okay, I don't wanna try and attack. Okay, another door over to the left, wall to the right. Uh, I guess we'll go out this door, but I wanna make sure that we explore this building as well. Oh, okay. Penitent one, you who carry the painful guilt in your cracked hands. Lend it to us and alleviate our burden. Lend it to us and wipe away our tears. Because it is an act of penitence. The virtue of Mea Culpa hath ascended. Mea Culpa Shrines. Visit Mea Culpa Shrines to increase the power of your sword. You can also spend Tears of Atonement. Okay, there we go. So that's what it is. Tears of Atonement to unlock combat techniques. Visit additional shrines and increase Mea Culpa Strength to access more powerful techniques. So as I'm killing enemies, I'm getting Tears of Atonement. And if we interact with this shrine, what can we do here? Okay, so Mea Culpa, we're at Mea Culpa level one. So I can't do anything here, but I can unlock these. So 2,000 Tears of Atonement, 500, 500, 1,500. I can do either Sinful Wrath or Weight of Sin. Let's read all of them, though. Last words, the Penitent One performs a fourth combo finish attack. I like that, but that's 2,000. Concentrates the power of the Mea Culpa on the blade, allowing the Penitent One to to release its full potential in a single but incredible devastating attack. So a charge attack there, holding the attack button. Weight of Sin, it takes advantage of the speed of a fall to perform a powerful plunge attack. Down and attack, okay. Do like that. And then Sacred Thrust, the Penitent One takes advantage of the dodge impulse to thrust Mea Culpa at the enemy's furthest away. I like that a lot. I think what we'll do is, we'll do the charge attack, Sinful Wrath. Okay, so there we go. And then it looks like not much more we can do here without a lot more Tears of Atonement and then further Mea Culpa levels. And this is not going to open from the side. Okay, well, I'm glad we came down here then. Got that Mea Culpa Shrine. 
By the way, any game that lets you jump and grab ladders mid-jump, a-okay in my book. We have that door, but let's go up first. Glad we did. We have an item up here. This is... A dove skull. It's apparently a rosary bead. Equip rosary beads in your rosary to improve the characteristics of the penitent one. Find additional knots to increase the number of beads you can equip. So, a rosary, and you'll have to... Forgive me, I am not well versed in um, in the Catholic religion, in Catholicism, which I believe is where the rosary actually uh, emanates. So it is used for prayer and for for penance. So uh, please feel free to fill me in in the comments below. But a dove skull, skull of a bird drilled as a colette. Its apparent frailness slightly strengthens the penitent one's defenses. That morning... When the bonfires were lit and the convicts were raising their ghastly pleas to the indifferent inquisitors, a white dove came down from heaven and perched on the shoulder of a prisoner where it stayed until it burned with him. Okay, so we can equip it. Right now it looks like we have two open slots for rosary beads, but we can unlock further ones. And ooh, door here or door down below. Let's go, let's go up high first. And it looks like I have another one of those Children of Moonlight. But a lever here that does not seem to do anything. Okay, so nothing we can do here. So let's just drop down a level. And, oh, by the way, there's no air dash, at least not right now, which is uh, unfortunate. Okay, so now we're just down below. Makes sense. Oh, someone at the window. Thou hast called upon the winch of the Order of the True Shrine. In this place, we gather the remains of those who were separated and forgotten, so we can grant them holy burial as our charitable rule prescribeth. Help us, these poor souls, O penitent one in silence. The order blesses you. Okay. I guess he needs help with something and at some point. <laughs> Figure that out. What do we get? Phalanx of Brandon the Gravedigger, which is a collectible. Brandon Joshua Mullins dug the graves of hundreds throughout his life, whether friend, family, or foe, but when the chaos arose, there was no one left to return the favor. Oh. That's sad. <laughs> Wasteland of the Buried Churches, and I'm assuming this is, yep, that's a new enemy right here. And what kind of attack? You are you are carrying a very large statue of maybe an angel and you are uh, you're tied to it. Okay. That's that's a heavy attack. Okay, so this is not a weak attack, meaning I'm not going to be able to simply uh, get a counter attack on you. I will have to I can deflect it. But I can't actually parry it, which makes sense. It's a big attack. Okay. Down below, that's another... Oh, jeepers. All right. Throwing rocks at me and another one up above, I think. There we go. Uh, spikes that I don't... I don't have the ability to pogo as much as Hollow Knight, so I don't think I'm going to attempt to pogo those spikes just yet. Okay. Hopping over here. Oh, there is something down there, though. How do I get that? Okay, good deflection. Uh, ooh, I don't know what that is waiting for me. Can I drop down there? It Maybe if I slide, I could try it. It's worth a try, right? Nope. And this way as well, then? Nope. Okay. So I'll have to drop down below, maybe, and make my way back there. Alright. Little guy with a shield. Shouldn't be too bad, right? Could probably parry him, I would imagine. Yes, I can. Eh, not too difficult either. Alright. I like when parries, you know, they're not the most challenging to, uh, whoops, to pull off. 
I like when they're a little bit forgiving at least. Wow, that prayer really does go up the ceilings or up the walls. That's pretty cool. Okay, is this gonna fall? No? Good. There we go, good. Drop down. And before we go out that door, let's go down. Maybe we can go and find that loot that we just saw. Oh, we also need to try our new charge attack, right? But I can't move with it, which is unfortunate. All right, we'll try to actually. Well, let's bait an attack and then charge it up. Walk towards me. Oh, it's slow. Oh, there we go. Oh, gross. <laughs> okay. I don't think that gave me any more fervor, though. Uh, oh boy. You look a little scary. Let's see what you do. Oh, gross. Okay. Oh, careful, careful. I'm not even sure what I'm looking at here. All right, we got the kill. And we got the item, which is uvula of proclamation. I, I'm sorry, the little dangly balls in the back of your throat. I just got a uvula. Oh, it's a rosary bead. When the uvula is equipped, you have a chance of earning tears of atonement when destroying an object. Oh, that's kind of cool. Decree from the Holiness Escribar. It shall be called the Anointed Legion, said His Holiness. Under the armor, their bodies shall be covered with bandages anointed with oils that I myself will bless. They will protect the mother of mothers as I will protect them. Okay, so I just got the uh, the hanging ball. I believe it was Full House, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that called them the hanging balls of courage. I want to say that that was involving uh, the dentist. <laughs> anyway, probably aging myself with that comment. Let's go on just a little bit further before we call it apart here. Um, let's go through this door. Hey, I got one tier of atonement. Oh, terrible. I should probably heal up just to be safe. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I don't even know what I just hit back there. There we go, hopped over it, that was good. Let's take care of you first. Good. Oh, got that kill nice and quick. Now, can I actually make this jump? That would be nice. Yes, I can. And we get what? Capitate of Barak the Herald. So probably another collectible, yep. Whether executions or lashings, Barak was always there to proclaim them loudly, but his voice broke down gradually as, day by day, he had to announce the sentences of his entire family. Yeesh. Okay, another Child of Moonlight out of reach, at least as of right now. Can I get up here? Yes, I can. Oh, careful now. Okay, two out of 38. Oh, good. Okay, let's do a little aerial attack. Good. Oh, jeez, that was quite the hit, huh? Okay, let's heal up. Hopefully we'll get a shrine here soon. Whack those for some more free Tears of Atonement. Good. How about some prayer? Nice, good. Oh, less good. All right. Going straight up, good. All right, where olive trees wither. You know what? I think that's about a good place to end for now. Uh, Blasphemous, so far so good. Simplistic, but 
really enjoyable in its execution so far so expect this to continue on let me know if you play this down in the comments below let me know what i can expect if you enjoyed it and yeah that'll do it for this first part thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed and i will see you next time